The face mask template is pretty simple, but it has a few interesting things that I want to point out. So we've done all this before. We have a face tracker with a face mesh in it. And you'll notice there's three face trackers, and each of these tracks an additional face. So you can have three different textures on three different face meshes. So if you're in a scene with two or three other friends, it'll actually work. So let's test this out. See how there's two of me, and you can see there's two masks. If we didn't have these extra ones, only one of the faces would have a mask. And so now onto the face mesh. If we go into the actual material, you'll notice it's physically based and not face paint, as you might guess. And it looks like the reason for that is there's a little bit of metallic and roughness on this. So there's kind of a nice little bit of reflection happening on this. If we turn down the roughness and up the metallic, that becomes more apparent. You can see the shininess there. And then emission is turned on as well. And that just adds a little extra brightness. I actually prefer it off because the shading is a little bit more natural. Otherwise, with this on, it gets just a little bit too flattened out. As you can see, full brightness is obviously not great, but yeah, I think just completely having this off is much better. And then this environment is what's being reflected on the material. So as you move that around, you can see the direction of the light is shifting. And that's because this office texture has dark spots and light spots that are reflecting as if this is mapped around a sphere around the whole scene. And that's pretty much it. Not a lot going on, but good to know that physically based can be good for a face paint style texture. And I'll link to, I think, this exact Photoshop document that Spark provides in this lesson. So you can download this as a starting off point if you want to do some face paint stuff. Uh, one last thing. Down here, you'll see there's a replace me texture and then the face mesh mask texture, which is this and that. And we've done this before. We're taking the alpha from this guy and adding it to this, or in this case, multiplying it. So if we just take this replace me RGBA and stick it directly in to the material, you'll notice on my forehead, the grid will change a little bit from a soft fade out to a hard edge. It's pretty subtle, but you can see up here, all these grids still go and then now it fades off. And an easier way to do this, if you're working on a face paint texture, you would just blur this in the texture itself and not have to do extra calculations in Spark because the texture itself should already have all the alpha it needs.